was 10. And now, at 73, Julie Stein has written over 1,400 songs over a period of 50 years. Songs like Everything's Coming Up Roses, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, People, written for such memorable Broadway shows as Gypsy, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Funny Girl, uh, The Bells Are Ringing, and about 20 others, more than 20 others. And to the delight of everyone in the business, and millions of music lovers everywhere, Julie just keeps going and going. And today, he has gone far enough to arrive here at us, and we're very pleased to have him here. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Julie Stein, playing a song that tells how it all began. It all began a long time ago. <clears throat> I was a child prodigy, and uh, I used to play music like... Uh, Etc. Etc. I went to high school. I found everybody walked out on that. They all liked the boys that played rock time at that time, uh, and so I went out and bought myself a lot of music. Came back the next day to the gymnasium, played for the dance class, and I was a complete smash. Such a smash that the boys said, "You must write song for the school show." I'd never written a song before, and this is the song called "The Guy with the Polka Dot Tie." to the guy with the polka dot tie he could sing so very high he said uh he, oh god whatever happened to the guy with the polka well it's a long time ago and it went something like that anyhow uh instead i'll play one of my favorite songs from funny girl to hear that played by the man who created it. I wanted to meet you for a long time. You, I finally got you. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> glad you came here because, uh, you know, as a fan and everything, I've looked forward to talking with you. You have created a lot of music and played a lot of music before you started writing songs. I mean, both classical and, and popular. Right. What started you with the writing of songs? Well, as I said, uh, I guess money. Money? <laughs> you could make more creating them than you could playing them? Yes, yeah, so my, fa my father and mother were very disturbed when I gave up classical music and brought those checks home every week, and I guess that compensated for everything. My father said, listen, it wasn't all in vain. <laughs> you laughed all the way to the bank. That's right. That, but you must derive some artistic satisfaction, too, from, from the creation. I never wanted to write things. songs, Hugh. Is that right? No, you I, really were I really, really ran money. away from it. I really ran away from writing songs. I like to play with the bands. You know, I played with the Ben Pollock band, with Glenn Miller was a trombone player, and Benny Goodman was the clarinet player, Charlie Spivak was the trumpet. We all had a kid band together, and we had a lot of fun. That's what I wanted to do, and then I was unhappy at that, and I coached girls singing, and then finally I went to California, 20th Century Fox, and from there uh, I decided maybe songwriting is good, and I, I gave it a go, and it ha all happened I'll for me. I'll say it happened. This is the most hackneyed question of all, but when you get an idea for a song, is it, does it just come into your head, or do you say, now I, I think I'll create a song about a polka dot tie or about people? What, how do you proceed when well, you start with? Well, uh, I don't believe professionals, I am a professional, I don't believe professionals need to be inspired, because I think we perspire. I think it's work. It's just work. Huh? That's right. And uh, 
uh, all this thing about how did you get the idea and how did it come to you, that's nothing. You just sit down, it's a job. You sit down and you write. You know, basically you have to know how to write. You have to be there. You have, it's all, I think I'm composing when I, as I'm talking to you now, I, I believe I'm writing now. Is it, is and that, right? no, yes. Yeah. That's a very, very important thing. The brain, this computer up here. Sure. And this program has to do with people growing older in old age. And I think one of the most devastating things that was ever invented by the life insurance companies is save that money and settle down and you're and, living. And I think nothing, work, yeah. if you stop working, you are through. That's, you must find a... If I ever stopped to think how old I was, I wouldn't write anymore. <laughs> no, but you true. must work all the time and enjoy way of living. I don't care what you do. And my uh, job is, happens to be writing music, and I love it. Well, Outside of keep, horses, I like keep music. Yeah, I know. Horses. I was going to ask you about that, because there's a new biography coming out about... Uh, can, I, can I show you yeah, like, pretty. This jacket. is the Theodore Taylor book on Julie, the story of a uh, composer, Julie Stein. I'm going to hold, hold this for a and get a close look at it. And uh, that's Random House, isn't it? Coming that's out real right. soon. That was the last book that... Bennett Cerf, the late Bennett Cerf, put together. Is that right? It was his that's idea, and I dedicated the book to Bennett Cerf. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. And it, of course, it's a, it is the life of, of Julius. It's Stein. devastating. One of the things <laughs> I'm going to ask you about, I know that, that gambling has been a, a great attraction to you, probably also from the standpoint of making money, and you made money doing that. But was that a problem to you ever? Did you yes, want to uh, get loose from it? People who gamble, and myself, it's when we're bored, we gamble. Uh, in my case, it was an escapism. And I try to get out of it. I mean, gambling is fine if you gamble what you have in your pocket. But I mean, gambling beyond. And I got myself all in trouble gambling too much. I was really an incurable. Uh, I went to an analyst, and I, re I said to him, I want to stop gambling. And the uh, first thing he says, all right, let's go to the races this afternoon. Well, I said, <laughs> I'm with the wrong analyst. He wanted to go to race. But he was watching me. And he finally said, how? He said, you're a man, every time you write a show, you gamble a year of your life. You know, the people don't understand anything when I write a show or write a show. It's not a weekly check. No, we gamble right. on the return. Because it could We're gambling fall. not a, a, a year of every right. If the show fails, I've lost a year of my life. It's a big gamble. So he said, so he says, you put it all these, but that the gambling spirit was born in you when you started to gamble on in your shows career, yeah. and gamble on my career, right. And that was enough for you then? Right? You just said something very interesting. I never thought of gambling on my career because I was going to be a concert pianist and playing in bands. Then suddenly I became a songwriter where you really gamble in your career. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a luxury to be a, a songwriter, you know. I would <laughs> you don't imagine. Make it, so you wasted a lot of time. It's a luxury to have the talent, though, too. You had, after you lost your first wife, and you've been married now for 15 or 16 years right, to... Uh, right. Maggie, right. and you've got two families in effect, two grown yes, children, yes. and another set of children, but only one daughter, and your daughter's ten and a oh, half. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah, did yeah. that mean something to you to, to get oh, a girl? Oh, oh, it's a wonderful, it's, a, it's quite a wonderful thing. The wonderful thing is uh, that in my uh, my first wife passed away, and my second marriage, here I am doing thing, a brand new family. Uh, my daughter Catherine is ten, and Nikki is fourteen, and uh, I have to be, you know, they don't know how old I am. They just go along. I have to go out in the park and play with that boy and run around. You know, I've been running around since he's four years old. And, that's very And you that's forget how old you are. You know, that's why this being old or growing old is a state of mind. I don't think we should ever think of it. I think it's more important to just do something and have a purpose in life. That's more that better than that rose-colored cottage with the sticks around the place yeah, and all that. That's, that's that the thing. insurance company kept telling us for years, you know. We got a rose-covered piano here, and I'd love to hear you do a little more while you're here. Could you give us another? another well, how about me playing a selection of the songs from Gypsy? How about that, audience? We'd love to hear it. Julie Stein. Thank you.
he said something interesting, you know, Julie Stein said, you always think when a man has a lot of talent, which he has, that somehow some magic force just causes his hand to be dragged around on the paper and he doesn't have to put any effort into it when he creates something. But he said it's a lot of hard work. So you have to have the talent, too, but you also have to work hard, I guess. Good to hear him and get a chance to chat with him. Increasing...